Mitchell too as well. We saw the actor AD. Um, you know, um, just your thoughts on the in season tournament. A lot of players are out here saying that it's gonna be a home game for you guys because of how close that location is. Just wanted to get your thoughts on that and you doing a commercial with all the guys and your thoughts on the end season. Yeah, um you know, a Laker fans travel well anyway. Wherever we go. So uh we feel like wherever we go it's a it's a home game for us. Um but the tournament's been cool, man. Um, obviously, we didn't know, you know, how to be going into it, but it's it's going pretty well. I mean, the the atmosphere around the games are been very competitive. Um, obviously, the color schemes on on the court has been pretty dope to see. Um, but it's been good, man. So, uh, you know, it's four left, um, and I can, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be even crazier. As far as the atmosphere and the competitiveness and the, and the intensity tomorrow night. Is it a surprise for you being in Las Vegas in December? Like you yeah. talk about this on that? Yeah, for sure. Um, it is crazy. I mean, uh, you know, usually it's for us is in you know October for preseason, but uh, I mean, who doesn't love Vegas? So uh, it's weird, but um, I think it's a great location. Rachel, second row. Uh, Anthony, this is a real good matchup of bigs you've got you've got going. Can you break and analyze, break that down and analyze a little bit what that matchup's going to be for you in the front line? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously we uh, got a great front line of bigs. You know, me, <clears throat> C. Wood, Jackson Hayes, uh, you can even throw Bron in the mix, plays a four. And then on their side, you know, you have Alex um, you know, Zion, you know, who are two bigs that complement each other very well. So, um, you know, every time we played them, you know, since I've been here, uh, especially just me and Bron, um, it's been competitive. Uh, it's been fun. Uh, and I'm pretty sure we're going to get that same, you know, intensity tomorrow night. Joe, up here. Uh, Anthony, among the topics of discussion today um, has been the financial incentive to this tournament. C.J. McCollum, among others, has, has brought it up as a factor. How does it weigh for you the the five hundred thousand that's on the line if you win? Christmas coming up, so you know, some gifts for the kids, wife. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that obviously plays a part. Um, I think now at this stage, everyone receives something. Um, but you know, you always want that top prize, so uh, it plays a factor in, in a lot of um, other games so far. You know, just even trying to get to the four. And then, you know, when you're here, I think, uh, you know, you, you think of, you know, you come all this way, you know, so you might as well try to go out and try to get the entire thing. Um, you know, anytime you put a a group of competitive guys, you know, on the court together and then you have something to play for, especially this early in the season, you know, you're going to get the games that we've been able to get so far. Um, so it's been fun. But I, I think just adding that incentive, of the 500,000 has only boosted the competition. Third row on this side. Hey, Anthony, there's obviously a, a lot of traction behind the NBA and the team possibly coming here. LeBron's talked a lot about it, of course, too. Just what are your thoughts now that you have an event like this and just maybe the possibility of a team down the line? How would it fit? Yeah, um, it's a great location. I mean, everyone comes here uh, in the summertime. Anyway, I mean, you have the hockey team here, WNBA here, uh, football here. Um, we've had multiple games as the Lakers here in preseason, uh, and I think that's kind of another reason why the tournament is here. I'm um, just kind of getting a feel, see how it is, turn out, uh, things like that. But um, I know it has been discussed numerous times on several occasions about possibly bringing a team here. Um, and I think if they do, uh, it would only be beneficial for the NBA. Next question on the left. Um, just looking at the film last game, Torian, uh, Vando, I know you're the anchor on defense, but Torian, uh, Vando, um, also Cam Reddish did a great job guarding, you know, Devin Booker. How do you feel, you know, the team is making strides in terms of defensively, even though you guys haven't fully been healthy, but seeing how you guys, you know, guarded Book and played together defensively, there's been moments you and Christian Wood have played to good together too. How do you feel like strides are being made defensively for you guys? Yeah, I mean, just getting Cam and Vando back uh, helped us a lot. Um, things that we were able to do defensively uh, with our schemes and, and things like that. But, um, no, they did a good job last night uh, on, on Book and KD. And, 
you know, we give them a lot of, um, you know, one-on-one ability to guard those guys, but they also communicate with us, um, whether it's the coaches or other players, about how we can help them. You know, when you got two elite scores like that, and even tomorrow night with CJ and BI, um, it's a team defense. You know, all five guys have to guard them and, you know, be helping those guys. You know, you leave those guys on you know, on the island one-on-one, um, it's a pretty good chance they'll get the, get the shot that they want. So, uh, you know, we have trust and confidence in, you know, our wing defenders and uh, think that they can get the job done, but it, it takes all five of us to guard those type of players. On social media of you and LeBron talking to each other. I guess the Lakers put out on backstage Lakers. People don't understand how cerebral you are too as well. Um, just talk about how those conversations are, you know, um, breaking down the game and how cerebral you are, but, you know, you and LeBron always con- in constant communication with each other. Yeah, uh, especially on the defensive end. Uh, you know, he comes to me a lot. The coaching staff comes to me a lot about what we want to do defensively um, each game and yeah, I mean, I think that's the the teams that can communicate uh, and figure things out on the fly, um, whether it's mid-game, halftime, before the game, whatever, are the teams that usually go far in the season. And, um, you know, like I said, especially defensively when, you know, we try to figure out coverages or, you know, me and Brown having conversations, especially since he's playing a lot of the four, um, you know, it's, it's a little different from him now. So. You know, I'm trying to tell him things I see. He tell me things he see, and then we figure out a solution to to be successful on the defensive end. Any other questions? All right, thank you.